Now, finger movement is closely tied to the pendulum technique because it is the fingers that are responsible for holding and moving the pendulum once it is held. It's suspended by the fingers. When you think about it, what's really going on is we're just using the pendulum to tell us how the fingers are moving. If we were able to see fingers moving in this way, we wouldn't need the pendulum. But these movements are so subtle that it would be very difficult to tell which way they're moving. But because they are more fully revealed, the, the motion, the direction of movement of the fingers is more fully revealed by the pendulum, then the pendulum becomes very, very helpful. So realize that the only point of contact with the pendulum is the fingers. So we can get information from that point of contact directly, but we're going to have to do it in a way other than the pendulum. If we just took the pendulum away and decided we're going to watch the fingers, that's not going to actually be good enough. And actually, when you think about it, sometimes the fingers don't need to move. I can actually move my arm without moving my fingers, or I can move my hand without moving my fingers, or I can move my fingers. But the fingers are the point of contact with the pendulum. So we are able to use the fingers directly, but we have to change our technique if we want to eliminate the pendulum. This technique is quite easy to use because all the client has to do is sit down or lie down on the couch or the chair that you have provided for them, for your client. And by the way, you should have a comfortable couch or a comfortable chair. Just a, a lazy boy recliner is great, by the way, so they can just sit during the talking part and recline during the session. Alternatively, some hypnotists like to have two different chairs, one for being awake and wide awake, well aware and talking to the hypnotist and another one for the actual hypnosis session, a more comfortable one. That way you, you program them that when they're sitting in the, in the more upright chair, the less comfortable one, the more office-like chair, then that's time to be fully alert and engaged in the conversation. And when they move to the comfortable chair, that's time to relax and let go and go into hypnosis. Milton Erickson uh, did not do things that way. Milton Erickson would just have the person sit in a chair or on a couch or something that was comfortable for them, and he would perform everything there. Now, I am sitting in such a way that you can clearly see my hands. Now, you don't have to have your client sitting in this way, for example. They, their hands can be resting on their knees, for example, or on the arm of a chair, as long as you can see their hands. But for purposes of educating you and training you to do this, I want to make sure that you can absolutely see my hands so you can see what's going on. Now, we have a number of options here because there are 10 fingers available and there are two different hands available. So I can structure this in any way I want. For example, and I, all I want to do is get yes, no, or I might answer that later. Those are our three options. And I might answer that later is something that we don't assign. We don't assign a finger to it or any type of movement. Just say that any movement that is not specified as a yes or no will be considered, I might answer that later. The other option is to put them into hypnosis, use your induction deepening, and then you tell them what you're going to do and you tell them to establish a yes or no. I have found that either way works fine. Whether you explain to them ahead of time what you're going to do and then you go ahead and do it, you've already established yes and no, or you put them into hypnosis and then you explain it. So it really comes down to your choice and over time you will find out if you use both methods, you will find out which one that you prefer to use over the other one. So in either case, let's say that we're moving forward in time now to the point at which we either explained it ahead of time, established yes or no, and then did our induction deepening and now we're ready to ask questions, or we just went ahead and did our induction deepening and now we're explaining it to them and we've already explained it. Let's move ahead to the point in time at which we're ready to ask questions. I've established yes and no, and now all I need to do is ask questions. Now my questions need to be very specific. Now this is whether you're using the pendulum for yes or no, or using the finger responses for yes or no. Either way, you need to ask very specific questions, and remember, the answers need to be yes or no. Now, you can use yes or no questions to get answers to things that 
you may think wouldn't fall into yes or no. For example, if someone is confused about where they should live and they want to live somewhere in the United States, well, rather than assigning a finger for all of the states, because you would obviously run out of fingers, because there are more states than fingers, what you can do is take their top list of places they'd like to live, states they'd like to live, and go down that list. Would you like to live in Florida? Yes or no? And they give you a yes or no. Would you like to live in New York? You get a yes or no. Would you like to live in California? You get a yes or no. So you're finding out subconsciously what they really want because sometimes people are unaware of their actual desires, what they actually want to do. So you can get information from their subconscious mind about that. But you see how I've taken something that would ordinarily be a long list of items and I have made it into a yes or no possibility. Maybe there are several jobs they're thinking of, of getting and they're not sure which ones they actually like or which one they actually like. So you can go down the list. Do you like this one? Yes or no. Do you like this one? Yes or no. Do you like this one? Yes or no. So there are ways to get lists into yes or no options. Now let's take a step back a little bit and let's look at some of the other options in terms of setting up the finger movements. And remember this can be done before the session or during the session. Now we've talked about this being yes, right, right index finger up being yes, left index finger up being no. That's very straightforward. I like that one a lot. It's uh, very easy to use, but it doesn't have to be that way. Yes can be anything. Yes can be the pinky moving and no can be the right ring finger moving. Now my, now you notice that when I move my right ring finger, though I'm, I'm struggling to, to raise it, it's, it's a little difficult for me. I don't have tremendous motor control over that particular finger, probably because I don't use it a lot. But I do have control over other fingers and my thumbs, I have better control. So you want to find out if they are able to move it enough to give an answer. Now that's enough to give an answer when I move that finger, but notice how it moves, sort of moves the finger next to it a little bit. So it could be ambiguous. Whereas, look at my pinky. When my pinky moves, it moves distinctly. And when my index finger moves, it's clear that although the finger next to it moves a little bit, it's clear that the main action is happening here. So let's say that you've assigned yes, or that you are signing in that moment, yes for the right index finger, and you haven't established it ahead of time. So you're in the moment, you're in the hypnosis session, and you're saying yes is going to be indicated by your right index finger, and you say that, and the actual action is nothing. You're looking at the right index finger, waiting for it to move, and it just remains still. And you're thinking to yourself, Hmm, I wish I had established this ahead of time. Well, usually it's not a matter of needing to take them out of hypnosis and go ahead and establish that. Usually it's just a matter of speaking more clearly or perhaps you will help them elevate that finger. You will say, now I'm going to touch your right index finger and I'm going to help you elevate it and you can show them how it moves. You do not have to uh, take them out of hypnosis or perhaps that is not an appropriate choice. Perhaps moving the right index finger is not an appropriate choice. Perhaps you can move to their right thumb. Their right index finger may move very subtly, but it still may move. You want to look for a distinct motion that you can tell is a motion. Perhaps their left finger moves very subtly. So you need to watch for what's going on. Now, you are going to need to make sure that you understand what they are conveying to you with their motions. So as long as you understand it, as long as it's clear to you, that's fine. So for example, if the right index finger moves and the other fingers move a little bit, but you can clearly tell that that is the right index finger moving, then then you're all set, you're ready to move on. One of the reasons why I like to use different hands, you know, if the right index finger is moving and it's causing other fingers to move, well, it's all in this hand. Everything that's happening is in this right hand. I'm not confused because I haven't set up this finger as being no and this finger as being yes and I'm not sure which one's moving. I see movement in the right hand, I know that we've got a yes. I see movement in the left hand, as long as the finger is part of that movement, I know that we've got a no. So I've got distinct finger movements based on what I'm asking and I'm all set because of that. 
Now, when you do this, you'll probably not have your patient, you do not need to have them have a pillow on their lap with their hands on their pillows. They can simply be relaxing. Their, their hand can be uh, dangling over the edge of a chair, for example, as long as you're able to see the motions, see them happening. So let's go back to the example of you have put them into hypnosis and you have told them to move their fingers and there's no movement. What are you going to do? Well, you can choose other fingers if you want to. Also, you need to realize that hypnosis time is different from the time you are experiencing. You are experiencing normal everyday waking consciousness when you are talking with them. They are experiencing hypnosis, which is similar to experiencing sleep. They are not in a big hurry to do anything. So many of the suggestions that you give, you'll find there's a delay between the time that you give it and the time that it's actually done. And that's okay. So you want to wait up to a full minute after you give the instruction for them to do that. So let's say, for example, you're saying, okay, we're going to say the right finger means yes. Go ahead and move your right index finger to indicate yes. And you see nothing. Wait, uh, tell them the command again. As I've said, your right index finger indicates yes. Go ahead and move it up now to indicate yes. And you see nothing. Wait a full minute before you do anything. And then you can repeat it again. Then you can tell them that you're going to raise their right finger and then they should be able to do it. Now, realize that in some very, very rare cases, there will not be any movement at all, in which case it's fine because you can always bring them out of hypnosis and then explain to them what you're going to do and set up the signals and put them in a lighter state of hypnosis so that you are not having them so deep in hypnosis that they are non-responsive. That is a very, very rare case. In fact, that's something I have heard of, but I've never had that happen to me. So it's not really anything that you need to be concerned about, but if it does happen, it's very simple to resolve, bring them out of hypnosis, talk with them, tell them what's going on, then put them back in a lighter state of hypnosis, meaning you don't spend as much time with the induction, and then carry on from there. So now I'm here with Lisa, and we're going to demonstrate the finger moving technique. Now, Lisa is sitting in such a way that you will be able to see her fingers. Realize that clients sit in a variety of ways. You just have to be able to see their fingers. I find it somewhat uh, unuseful to, to tell a person to uh, sit with their fingers like this, their hands like this, so I can clearly see their fingers in their laps. I'd rather have them sit in a way that's natural to them. So Lisa is sitting in such a way that we can see her fingers for the purpose of filming, but realize in a natural, normal situation, one hand might be here and one hand might be here. As long as you can visually see both of the fingers that you're talking about, then it's going to be fine. Now in this scenario, we're going to set up our yes and no based on the index fingers. So her left index finger is going to be no and her right index finger is going to be yes. It just seems logical to me in most cases to make no on the left and yes on the right. However, I could do it any number of ways. I could have any of her fingers meaning no, any of her fingers meaning yes. I could have the entire left hand meaning no, the entire right hand meaning yes. Uh, it's really up to me and then how she responds. So the situation now would be such that Lisa is already in hypnosis and I'm going to establish yes or no. So we're going to establish yes and no now, Lisa. So I'm going to touch your left index finger now, and this is going to represent no. Anytime you move this finger, it's going to indicate no. So go ahead and move it now. That's right, and it was a subtle movement, but I can see it, it clearly moved. Okay, so now we're going to establish yes. Yes is going to be indicated by your right index finger. I'm going to touch it now, that's right, so anytime you want to indicate yes, move your right index finger and do that now. Very good, a subtle movement, but I could see it. And oftentimes that's all you're going to get. So now we're going to start with a series of questions. I'm going to ask a series of yes or no questions. And the yes or no questions would be along the lines of finding out information that I need to find out that she has otherwise not indicated to me. And perhaps she's not consciously aware of it. So I'm going to start out by asking, Lisa, are you relaxed? Please indicate yes or no with your finger movement now. Okay, yes. So I've got a yes. I know that she is relaxed. Very good. 
Now I'm going to ask a question that relates to the challenge that she is facing. We're going to make up a scenario in which Lisa is facing a challenge that is related to motivation. And so I'm going to ask a question concerning motivation. Lisa, do you feel motivated in your life recently? Yes or no? Okay, so I've got a no answer. All right, so now I can go forward with a series of questions and I can pinpoint the reason that the motivation is not there. I can go through a series of questions during which I can ask yes or no and I can find out exactly what the root cause of the lack of motivation is. So now you understand how to use the finger movement technique. It's a very straightforward technique. All you have to do is prepare your series of yes or no questions and then establish which finger is going to be which, how the, how the movement is going to indicate a yes or no, and you're also going to establish, one thing we didn't do in the demonstration because I just wanted to show you how yes or no works, is you're going to establish that a a movement that's not yes or no, perhaps another finger moves, is going to indicate maybe I will answer that later. They're possibly going to answer that later. They're not definitely going to have to answer it. It gives them the option and it's going to happen later. So it's very little of a burden. They may or may not answer it. And if that does happen, it will happen later. So that's what uh, movement means that is not distinctively yes or no.